Yeah, I mean, also, like, when you're playing Nautilus versus Rakan is really weak in lane. Like, he scales better than you, and he has more mobility and these type of things, but Rakan is not strong. Lucian, if he dashes forward to hit Ash or something, you need to be always in a position to hook. Rakan Ws your AD. You just need to hook the uh, Lucian. I mean, you guys are so much stronger level 1, like, it's not even funny. If I'm you guys, I would just stand in the first bush in lane and just fucking proxy them, like, walk past the wave. I don't like the leash here. Now you say, we don't want a leash. That's a bit troll, because now your jungler can't adapt his path. Yeah, right? yeah. But there's nothing wrong with spawning into the game and being like, ah, uh, we're playing Caitlyn Lux versus Ezreal Karma, we are not leashing. And I mean here, when you see this guy locking himself in Q, he was dead. Like, this is completely crazy. What Lucian does yeah. here. Sure, you don't expect him to do this, I get that. But you should be in the mindset that if Lucian is hookable and on my screen, I am hooking him. Yeah, <laughs> boy. An enemy has been slain. And then work that into me. Give your me a good old rub. Because you have Ash, like you're gonna hook him, and then Rakan is gonna be forced to W Ash, but then you're gonna root the Lucian one second after your hook, like you're not gonna root instantly, you're gonna root him when the Rakan knockup is about to stop, you know? Yeah. Then you guys are just gonna run this guy down. Yeah, that's good. I would ignite, yeah. You shouldn't just stand here though, like on vision like this. Like hooking to make him force E start is good. He can have W and slowly poke Ash, but now you force him to do E, it's fine as long as Rakan doesn't get a good angle on you guys now while your Q is down. If you just now use fog here, there's no vision. You just run into the bushes and let Ash play the upside of the lane. Then they have to constantly think about you hex flashing and they have to both stand like here with creeps like this, right? Okay. And it makes it so much easier for your uh, AD to hit people and land good Ws and stuff. Because they need creeps to stop Ash W. They also need creeps to stop your hook. Look how they're mm. standing. How can you hook here? You can't. But if Ash is here, she can still W. It's more range. And then yeah. if you're here, hex flashing, then they have a hard like this. Especially in solo queue, having movement speed on champs that can run around the map is just important. You're gonna get a lead and win the game from you hooking Volibear, you getting picks. Ruby Crystal isn't gonna help you. You having tier 2 boots just lets you run around and look for more picks, which is essentially your win condition. But yeah, I would just click mid here again, sweep mid, look to counter gank, look to gank custody in if I can, and then I would go bot. My goal is never to be bot on this wave, my goal is to be bot for the next wave. The wave has already crashed, so now I'm running bot lane for like one caster minion. Okay, your AD just kills herself. Lucky. If you look at bot lane, right? Support level 6 is broken. Your ultis on every support champ, like I can't say this enough, it's so OP. Leona ult, Nautilus ult, you know? They're all broken and unskilled. Like you can just press ult on a guy and there's nothing he can do, right? So when you're staying mid, you give up on two waves of solo XP. Like you're legit 6 if you go bot almost, but uh, you're going mid. So if your yeah. mid wants push out, right? Then you should just stay mid here and just eat the wave. Of course, if your mid needs help to fix the wave, you should choose that over getting XP as a support, obviously. I'm just saying, understand that there's two waves of solo XP on bot. So here I would look to proxy kill Lucian. So I would leave the lane here and then go past his turret. Because you know again, like he he's recalling really late, right? Like he's basing right now. But now he's yeah. running to recall. So you always need to like track people in fog. Even though you don't see him, you need to like like visualize what he's doing. Right? Right now he's walking into a recall position. Right? He's pressing recall right now. So he's in base around now. Right? Okay, so he's walking. You need to think like this in game. You don't wanna go here. Why would you show him what you're doing? Mm, true. Why would you show Rakan? what you're doing yeah if you just walk here and you sweep even if there is a ward they still don't know what you are doing after it's also much scarier for them because they have to think about stuff like kindred right because if kindred now respawns and you sweep their vision they don't have any wards and then they have to be afraid of face checking bushes and stuff because yeah. kindred could theoretically be there but doing this it's just never good yeah and you're also just taking plates from your ad too if you're just gonna stand here and hit the turret here just think about okay rakan i see him and lucian is walking now one me too run into tri bush sweep their vision stand here and proxy the guy if he walks up you just run at him you don't hook okay you don't hook yeah. you just run at him when he's walking past you, you just run at him. Then okay. you walk up and you smack him in the face with auto attack. Because if you walk up and you like hook and he just dashes to his turret, then you have to dive him without your main damage and he exhausts Ash and then it's going to be cringe again. But yeah, like these two plays your AD is getting, he would get without you. And it's important that when his top fight is happening, you're also like looking 
what is Rakan doing? What is Rakan using? Like, what's his HP? Because if Rakan is like healthy here, he can run straight to bot. But if he's low, then Rakan is in base when Lucian is here, which is pretty important to know. Because you, when Lucian is walking at you, you need to know is Rakan behind him or is he like faking? For example, if Lucian is walking up now, then he's faking. Rakan can never be here yet. But if he walks up in like 10 seconds, if Rakan runs straight, then Rakan could be here. But if Rakan is 200 HP, we know that he's not running straight, right? But you have no f idea because you don't look. You don't need to see yourself auto-attacking minions, right? But these things you have to pay attention to. Because people don't yeah. always ping, right? Because like here, I need to know, is this guy fucking crazy in the head, right? When he's doing this, is he like insane or... But I don't I have no idea where the fuck Rakan is. For example, if this guy walks here now, maybe Rakan is here. I have no idea, so I need to know HP. Because this is what I mean, like, when he does this and the higher elo you get, enemy will do this and Rakan is here. Because he's thinking, you guys are thinking, Rakan is here. So you're not gonna hook him, right? If you hook him now and Rakan is here, they get double kill. Yes, and we can see that's what you're thinking too, look your click. Yeah. But we can know because of if he will recall or not. Because this is really bad. This is really, really bad. And another thing is that in League, you need to be really fine with doing a good play, winning, resetting, and then playing the game. Here you guys are getting a lead, right? He's losing CS, you guys are getting played. But League doesn't work like this. Okay, I get gold and now I'm winning. No, that's not how okay. it works. You get gold, you use your gold, and now you're winning. You're not actually winning now. He's winning. Your ADC, right, has no items. Your ADC came from base here, and now Lucian is basing. So they're on like even fighting ground when it comes to items. Your AD has this. Your enemy Lucian bases on this, so probably he has even more. And he's level 6, so you're not actually winning. The whole point of taking this wave is to recall. Because if I'm okay. Ash and I press B, like, let's say now, without taking the wave, I'm just going to lose the wave, because Lucian will push, right? Yeah. But if you guys one-shot this wave, just run and recall. Then you have a lead. You very, very, very rarely want to actually stay in lane after taking one wave, two waves, three waves, two plates, right? It's like 1k gold, because this is so greedy. And you're not tracking, like, in fog at all. Because, like, here, obviously you didn't die, right? But it's still terrible. It's so, so, so bad for the game. Yeah. Because Lucian ult doesn't matter. If I would use Lucian ult to make enemy support 10 HP, I would do it every time. Because yeah. now the game is unplayable. Your Kindred, for example, level 6, your mid has push, your team wants to invade red buff, and you just lost all your HP. So in this case, Silas is the victim, right? Now you're walking up, and now a fight happens. And in this fight, I'm 10 HP, and you just die to air. Like Lucian's warm between you guys, which is a byproduct of what happened, you know? Yeah. I wouldn't stay bot now, because there's nothing to do. Like, look your minimap, where's Rakan? We don't see him, right? You should assume that enemy support will go bot if you're crashing a wave. If you guys crash this wave and he shows somewhere that isn't bot, you will dive. So knowing this, you shouldn't stay bot. Here, what you're doing is really good. Why would you stay bot now? Sure, if you see Rakan killing Jax right now and Jax is just dead, then sure, you stay bot. So that Jax gets dove, but then Lucian gets dove. But you don't see Rakan right now. So isn't it a massive waste of a timer to walk up to the tower and then Rakan is just here? You should go to mid and connect with your jungler. And then if, let's say, when you arrive mid, if you see Rakan on bot lane, then you can just drop some ward around mid and then fucking go back to bot. Because like here, you're just assuming Rakan isn't bot. And that's a pretty bad way to play. Because now if he is bot, you're wasting so much time. When you could be getting full vision for your team and removing all of their vision and place your pink, getting mid control. And then if you see Rakan is bot, then you can ask yourself, can my ADC play 1v2? If I have Sigs, Maybe he can. If I have Smolder, maybe he can. Wave clear. Maybe yeah. I have fucking Ezreal, maybe he can. Jin. But if I have a fucking Draven, not so easy unless it's just a normal wave and he can ult it, right? Like your Kindred's getting invaded right now, getting fisted. And sure, if you walk top and she dies this quick, it would be useless anyways. But the goal overall should be to like convert your lead into elsewhere and like walk with your jungler and play with people. But I look yeah. at tab here, I see my Kindred is so strong. And it's a kindred. You guys work really well together because you have everything she doesn't. You are tanky, she isn't. She has damage, you don't. You have yeah. CC, she doesn't. Why would I force myself around the Ash? There's nothing to do but Ash got the wave. What the f is that <laughs> cooking? <laughs> That's a bit ambitious, Rokana. What the fuck, Arrow? What is bro ulting? <laughs> Like here, Silas is on side, so you have two people that could die. Ash could die on mid, or Silas yep. could die on side. 
So you gotta make sure there's nobody here trapping him. Otherwise, what the fuck do you want Silas to do? If you run here and start going here, do you want Silas to fucking walk like this? Why should he have to when Kindred Nought is right next to him? So you should be yeah. thinking like, Silas is in danger, not Ash. Like, of course, Kassadin could start ulting mid, but that's Ash's fault for walking forward when her team is here. Ash can just stand AFK in his push for like five seconds and wait. And then we can push mid together as a team and just get the 5v4. That was uh, very simple, no? When we just grouped and just... <laughs> One. Rien faire